Support for this debate on this public station is provided by the West Central Illinois Building and Construction Trades Council, representing 15 craft unions with over 17,000 members, working together to improve the quality of life and job opportunities. Strong Law Offices, representing injured workers and injury victims throughout Illinois for over 20 years. Strong Law stands strong for workers. Busey, committed to lending a helping hand to better the communities where we live and work since 1868. Busey, your dream, our promise. Teamsters Local Union Number 627, protecting the rights of approximately 3,000 active and several thousand retiree members in 12 counties in West and Central Illinois. Live from the WTVP studios on the Peoria, Illinois Riverfront, this is the Illinois Gubernatorial Downstate Debate. This program is produced in partnership with the Public Broadcasters of Illinois and the League of Women Voters. Good evening, I'm Jack Titchener from WSIU Public Television in Carbondale. I'll be the moderator of tonight's debate between the two major party candidates for governor of Illinois. The candidates are incumbent Democratic Governor Pat Quinn of Chicago, who is seeking his second full term as chief executive, and Republican nominee Bruce Rauner, a businessman from Winnetka. The Libertarian candidate Chad Grimm of Peoria is not taking part in the debate. Mr. Grimm failed to receive at least 10 percent support in a nonpartisan poll prior to the event, the minimum required for participation by the League of Women Voters of Illinois. Our candidates will be questioned by a trio of journalists. They are Amanda Vinicky, the State House Bureau Chief for Illinois Public Radio, H. Wayne Wilson of WTVP, Public Television in Peoria, and Jamie Dunn, the Executive Director of Illinois Issues Magazine and WUIS Radio. We're going to start with a one-minute opening statement from each of the candidates, the order of which was uh, determined by an offstage coin toss. The first opening statement will go to Governor Quinn. What makes you the best qualified candidate for the job? Well, thank you, Jack. Good evening, everyone. Uh, when I took the oath of office five years ago, it was a pretty tough time for Illinois. We had one former governor in jail another one going to jail. We had to pass tough ethics laws, and we have, and enforce them. We also had the Great Recession, caused great harm to many people who lost their jobs, and we had a huge budget deficit. The night I got sworn in, I asked the people of Illinois for their prayers, and I'm grateful for them. But we've been able to make hard decisions to help our state move forward. We were able to cut our budget and un remove unnecessary funding by about $5 billion. We've also been able to make t important fiscal reforms that made our state better, Along the way, I had to suspend the legislators' paychecks, including my own, but we got the job done for the people. Right now, our state has unemployment at its lowest level in six years. Jobs are up, unemployment is down, and it's very important that we keep together and work together, investing in education. We've been able to increase our investment in education, and that has helped our state grow jobs. I think the best way to go is to stay in this direction and do the right thing. Mr. Rauner. Good evening. Thank you to the panelists. Thank you to the League. Thank you to the people of Peoria. Thank you for the viewers here at home joining us tonight. My name is Bruce Rauner. I'm here because I'd like to go to work for you. I love Illinois, and I'd like Illinois to become the best-run state in America. I've been blessed in my career, driven terrific results, first working for Illinois teachers and police officers by investing their pension money, then by giving back in our community, donating to our schools, our Red Cross, our veteran services. We've driven results, and I want to do the same now to turn our state government around. Over the last 12 years, our state has lost its way. A small group of Chicago machine politicians have got control of our government in Springfield, and they've led us down a bad path. High unemployment, crime, low wages, deteriorating schools, high unemployment. We have lost our way as a state. We need to turn around. I'm the one who can drive big change. I can't be bought, bribed, or intimidated. I can stand up for the special interests. I'm good, not going to take a salary or pension. And I, I'm just going to dedicate my work to restoring the prosperity for the families in Illinois and bringing back the American dream for every family here by growing our economy and having the best schools in America. I look forward to going to work for you. It's time for questions from our panelists. The uh, candidates will each get a minute to answer the question. The first uh, question comes from Amanda Vinicky for Bruce Rauner. I hope this is actually going to be an easy question to begin the evening. In this age of hyper-partisanship, compromise is often seen as a dirty word in some political circles. So which member of the opposite party, who is currently either in or running for office, do you either most admire or feel you could best work with, and why? Uh, hmm. 
interesting. Um, through the process over the last couple, couple of years as I've been running for governor, I've taken time to get to know members of the General Assembly personally, Republicans and Democrats. I've spent a lot of time getting to know the Democrats. I look forward to working closely with them to solve problems on a bipartisan basis. Um, I highlight uh, Jack Franks, representative from uh, McHenry County area. I look forward to working with him. Uh, Toy Hutchinson, uh, leader south of Chicago. I look forward to working with her on education and other issues. I have a proven record as a, a, in the private sector of working with people from all backgrounds to solve problems and get things done. I was asked by the mayor in Chicago to take over um, the changes that were needed at McCormick Place as a board member in McCormick Place to make sure we were competitive for convention business. We made big changes there and restored conventions there. And then the mayor asked me to take over uh, the Tourism Bureau and put in a new board, new staff, new marketing plan. And today, Chicago is one of the fastest growing tourist destinations in America. I'll work with Democrats. I'll work with Republicans. We'll solve problems together. Governor Quinn. Well, I like about everybody. I get along with everybody. I believe in civility. Uh, Kurt Dillard, uh, somebody who's from my hometown. Uh, he's now going to be head of the Regional Transportation Authority. Uh, my mom worked at a junior high school in Hinsdale, Illinois that Kurt went to, and uh, I've always gotten along with him. We don't always agree on every single issue. But uh, we've worked on bipartisan important reforms. The pension reform was bipartisan, and uh, we had Democrats and Republicans working together. I think it's important to do that, and uh, the best way to go is to do what we've done. Uh, when we had to uh, get our state uh, back onto the job track and out of the recession, we passed a bipartisan uh, bill uh, for jobs in Illinois, for construction jobs, to rebuild our roads and bridges and, and our water systems and our schools. And we did that in a bipartisan way. I worked with the legislative members and leaders of both parties. Any other member, real quick, since Senator Dillard is no longer a senator? <laughs> Well, you know, he's still a member of the other party. That's what you asked, I think. But uh, I think that uh, certainly Jim Durkin, the leader of the Republicans in the House, uh, he worked with us on the pension reform, and I enjoyed working with him. Quickly, uh, Mr. Rauner, anybody uh, you'd care to add to that? Uh, uh, boy, I, there are many members in the General Assembly who have gotten to know, and uh, I, w I will work very closely with them on a personal basis. All right, H. Wayne Wilson has a question for uh, Governor Quinn. The website was opened up to questions from the public, and the number one topic that they submitted by far was about jobs, not surprisingly. So with that in mind, Peoria-based Caterpillar has plants from Aurora to Decatur and is one of the largest economic drivers in the state of Illinois. The company has delayed announcement of a new corporate headquarters, which hopefully will still stay in Peoria. Some engine manufacturing at the Mossville plant has moved out of state. If you were elected governor, what would you specifically do to ensure that manufacturing firms across the state stay and create private sector job growth in Illinois? Well, our manufacturing is up since I've been governor. We've worked not only with Caterpillar, but John Deere and Navistar, another manufacturing company, especially our auto manufacturing, because we have so many auto supply jobs in Illinois, as well as companies like Chrysler. When I became governor, we, the Chrysler and Belvedere had 200 jobs. They now have 4,500 manufacturing jobs. Same way with Ford on the south side of Chicago. They only had one shift. Now they have three shifts, round the clock. Uh, south of here, uh, Mitsubishi at Normal, a new product line. I've worked with each and every one of those companies. I think it's important to have skilled workers, well-trained workers. We provide job training wherever possible. Incentives both not only for big businesses, but for small businesses. And there's a reason why so many small businesses have begun and grown in Illinois in the last five years, because we emphasize education and working together with these companies. And I think that's the best way to help our companies grow. Mr. Ronner. A simple fact is, uh, since Governor Quinn came into office, Illinois has lost over 40,000 manufacturing jobs. I was very honored to receive the personal endorsement of the CEO of Caterpillar early in this election, Doug Oberhelman. Um, he has been an outspoken critic of the business climate in Illinois. Illinois is hostile to manufacturing firms with our regulations and our taxes. And as long as that's true, we can't really grow our economy and we can't solve the many problems facing us here in Illinois. Manufacturing jobs, on average, 
uh, have about $64,000 in pay and benefits. They, in turn, create another two and a half jobs on average. The manufacturing economy is critical. I will work closely with manufacturing firms like Caterpillar to make sure they stay here in Peoria. I want to make sure Caterpillar invests and opens their new world headquarters in here by making sure the business economy is strong and thriving. I'm honored to be endorsed by the Illinois Manufacturers Association, the Illinois Chamber of Commerce. We need to make Illinois pro-business and pro-growth in order to be able to fund our schools and our pensions and turn our state around. Jamie Dunn for Bruce Rauner. States would play a large role in implementing the proposed federal rules to cut carbon emissions. Do you believe that climate change is happening and is man-made? And what is your take on the Obama administration's plan to cut carbon, given that the state derives most of its electricity from coal? Um, I believe we need a broad-based portfolio of energy options in Illinois and in America. I do not believe uh, bet betting too much on any one sector is prudent. Um, we need broad base and we need energy independence for America and I'd like to see that also for Illinois. I believe we can have renewable energy resources here. We can have and should have further development of our wind farms, of our solar energy, renewable resources. But I also believe we can be prudent in our energy development from more traditional resources. We have incredible energy uh, opportunity in southern Illinois uh, with coal, uh, with oil and gas, with hydraulic fracturing. It can be a massive job creator and uh, tax revenue generator if we have a broad-based portfolio of energy options. And I'll push every, every uh, capability in that regard. Governor Quinn. Well, number one, I think we do have to reduce emissions and we have to take on climate change. The winter we just had and the terrible tornadoes last November here nearby in Washington and other places in Illinois, I think they're an alarm signal to all of us that uh, severe weather is something we have to pay attention to and reducing emissions is part of the job for all of us. And since I've been governor, our state has uh, erected uh, many, many wind turbines all across Illinois. I believe in wind energy and solar energy. I've been on the roof of the uh, Shedd Aquarium in Chicago where they have uh, solar collectors, uh, uh, world class. And we also have to believe in energy efficiency and we've invested in that in Illinois. Our state is the only state not on a coast that is in the top 10 of energy efficiency states in the country. And we've been able to do that in my time as governor. We invest in energy efficiency. It's one of the best ways to reduce emissions, help grow jobs. These are clean energy jobs that create good uh, paying jobs for people uh, by uh, reducing the need for energy wherever possible. And I think uh, uh, the state of Illinois can be a leader in this area. We have good workers who are well trained. Amanda Vinicky has a question for Governor Quinn. Governor, too many incumbents are wedded to running for office and are more concerned with re-election and higher pensions than voters. That's a quote from you in 1994, January, when you were campaigning to bring term limits to Illinois. Now you're running for office to complete what would be 10 years as governor and 16 consecutive years in the executive branch. What has changed? And for you, Mr. Rauner, you often brag about your lack of government experience. Name one time that you have hired a novice to serve at the executive level as a CEO, and how did that go? Governor Quinn. I guess I got started. I <laughs> led the effort for term limits in 1994. We collected nearly half a million signatures. I believe it, uh, having term limits for each office is a good thing for Illinois. Uh, I think I demonstrated early on my support for term limits. It's never wavered. Matter of fact, in 2008, when there was a vote for constitutional convention, one of the issues we used was the importance of term limits for each and every office. Also, uh, uh, been able to pass a constitutional amendment for recall in Illinois, as well as reducing the size of the legislature. Those are two constitutional amendments that I put on the ballot and got passed. So I don't, I don't think anyone should be in office for too long. I think it is important to have reasonable term limits for each and every office, and I'm going to work hard on that. I'm disappointed that my opponent here uh, didn't help us in 1994 when we were petitioning for term limits. Uh, we went all over the state. He had a great opportunity to join us. He refused to do it then and all of a sudden this year in election year he, he's a born again term limits advocate so I think it's uh, a good uh, policy and I look forward to getting it passed it took me uh, 32 years to get recall done but we got it done Mr. Rauner uh, we need term limits I will never give up on this issue uh, Pat Quinn 
had the chance for six years as governor to drive a bill through the General Assembly for term limits, has been completely silent on the issue. As governor, I will drive term limits with the General Assembly to get it on the ballot, let the voters decide. It's one of the most important reforms we can make. That, along with redistricting reform, which I'll push as governor, can really transform the culture here. You also asked a question earlier about experience. I've been a CEO for uh, decades. Uh, I've led and built one of the most successful, most respected investment organizations in the world, driven great results for the taxpayers of Illinois and the teachers and government workers of Illinois and many other states. And uh, I've driven great results in many other organizations in the not-for-profit world as well. And I've worked in and around government for education reform, for pension reform, for uh, good government in many regards. I've proven ability to solve problems, build talent teams of people and get things done, and I'll work on a bipartisan basis to do it. But have you ever hired somebody with that little experience in any one sector to work for one of your companies? Um, you know, I think we can look at uh, Rick Snyder in Michigan, who was a venture capitalist like me, became governor, won his first election, which I will also do, and is turning Michigan around very well. We can look at Rick Scott, who's a successful CEO in a healthcare company, uh, won his first election uh, as governor of Florida and is turning that estate around. We can look at Michael Bloomberg, a successful CEO in business, won his first election, mayor of New York, and did some pretty important uh, dramatic re reforms in New York. Business leaders, CEOs, can solve problems and get things done. Uh, it's all about executive leadership, team building. I'm going to have to stop you, sir. Uh, Governor Quinn, we're going to give you 30 seconds to wrap that up. Uh, with your response. Well, my opponent talks about uh, successful results. He's uh, uh, been involved with 12 different bankruptcies uh, involving other companies, and uh, there have been uh, six of his uh, executives uh, indicted and convicted and sent to jail. Uh, two are under indictment now. They've got 150 uh, uh, lawsuits against their nursing home chain and a uh, billion dollars worth of uh, uh, claims of wrongful death in those nursing homes. Uh, uh, lodge against his uh, company. So it seems to me those aren't terrific results whatsoever. And, okay, uh, got to stop you there. I'll, let's get back to the format. H. Wayne Wilson for Bruce Rahner. Let's turn to education. Statewide advisory question number three on the November 4th ballot asks if school districts should receive additional revenue based on enrollment from an additional 3% tax on income greater than $1 million. Do you support the proposal? And if so, how would you assure that the money will go to schools? If you don't support the proposal, from what source would you seek additional money for education? Um, uh, first of all, the politicians in Illinois have said every time they want to raise taxes, it's for schools. We put the lottery into Illinois to fund the schools. The money doesn't end up in our schools. Our uh, current governor raised our income taxes 67%, said much of it was going to be for education. Then he cut half a billion dollars from our school funding. Politicians use schools as an excuse to raise taxes. I am opposed to putting a further income tax on the families of Illinois. We already have income taxes that are too high. I'd rather like to see our income taxes rolled back to where they were in 2010 and do other tax reforms to generate um, additional revenue. And the biggest reform being becoming a pro-growth state where growth generates the tax revenues. And I am strongly a believer we need to increase overall education funding. Other things, wasteful spending can be cut, but education must be increased in its support. I'll make that the top priority for taxpayer dollars as governor. Governor Quinn. Well, when it comes to education funding, my opponent makes up things. We've increased education funding in the classroom by about $500 million. Independent fact checkers have indicated that. We've also paid the teacher's pension every single year. Prior to my arrival as governor, that didn't happen. So I've paid the pensions and I've increased funding in education. I think we need to do more. There is a, a referendum that I signed to put on the ballot asking whether or not millionaires should pay a little higher income tax and all that money by constitutional amendment would go to the school districts and classrooms of Illinois. I think that's a good idea. My opponent, who's a billionaire, doesn't want to raise his income tax, but he wants to uh, slash funding for schools all across Illinois. 
His budget plan would slash our education budget by $4 billion. It would uh, lay off one out of six teachers in Illinois and cause great harm to everyday people. He wants, with his plan, a million-dollar tax cut for himself and education funding slashed all across Illinois. I don't go for that, and I think it's a very good opportunity for the people of Illinois at the ballot box to send a message to the millionaires and billionaires that they ought to pay more. Next question is from Jamie Dunn to Governor Quinn. While we're on the topic of ed funding, um, many Illinois school districts can't make it on state aid alone because their property tax bases are so low that they can't provide the minimum amount of spending needed per pupil. A new proposal by Democratic Senator Andy Menard would re redistribute more state dollars to districts based on their ability to pay. Do you support Menard's plan, or is there a better way of ensuring local districts have the funding they need to provide a decent education to every student? Well, my view is we need to increase education investment. We have to fund schools more. And one way to do it is the referendum we just talked about. Another way is the budget I proposed earlier this year. It would put more money in classroom education than any other time in Illinois history. It would also put more money into early childhood education as well as scholarships for our students to go to college. But do you support changing the way uh, that we distribute? With respect to that particular proposal, I think it needs a lot of oversight and review. It passed one House, the Senate. It has not passed the House. It really needs more I think uh, debate. Uh, I, I do not favor reducing funding in a particular school district to its disadvantage. And so I think a much better way to go is what I've just proposed, increasing funding for all school districts. Uh, I think that should be done first and foremost. Mr. Rauner. Uh, I haven't studied the detail on Andy Menard's bill. Um, and from what I've read about it, I probably would not support that particular bill, although I do believe we should come up with a new state education funding formula. We are, I believe, 48th out of the 50 states for state general revenue support for education. That's not right. We should increase our state support for our schools. My wife and I believe that education is the most important thing we do together as a community. There's nothing more important. When you look at the challenge we, we face as a state and as a nation, um, unemployment, low wages, um, high crime, uh, poverty. The challenges we face, education maybe is not the sole solution, but it's a major part of the solution. My wife and I have dedicated our lives to improving public education and early childhood education for decades. We are very active in this issue. Governor Quinn, on the other hand, he's been in uh, government for decades. He has been zero on education, completely lacking in any regard on education, except He's increased our income taxes, set us with for schools, and then cut education funding. We need an education governor, and I will lead in that process. Next question is from Amanda Vinicky for Mr. Rauner. All right. You both claim that the state cannot afford the current level of retirement benefits for public employees. Do you think that the framers of the Illinois Constitution made a mistake by including the Pension Protection Clause that says retirement benefits shall not be diminished? And should Illinois amend the Constitution now to remove that amendment? I personally don't think that that uh, constitutional language is a mistake at all. I think pensions are a contractual obligation, and what uh, is agreed to should be paid into and honored by all parties. I was opposed to the pension changes that uh, Pat Quinn put through last November because I believe that they were unconstitutional. I don't believe it's right to change the payments to a retiree after they are already retired. And that's what Governor Quinn did in that pension reform bill. I don't think that's the right thing to do. What I have argued uh, from day one in this race is I think both the fair thing to do and the constitutional thing to do is to freeze the current pensions where they are today. Don't change anything from what's accrued. Pay those benefits as they come due. Uh, in the future, but starting tomorrow for future work, both for current employees and future employees, we should create a second pension plan that's more flexible and affordable, more of a defined contribution style plan. Doesn't save a lot of money in the very short term, saves billions in the long run. Governor Quinn. I think it's important to understand my opponent wants to privatize pensions in Illinois, a very risky 401k plan that has a hundred billion dollar hole. I don't think that's the right way to go in Illinois. I think the provision in our Constitution protecting pensions is a good one. We did pass a bipartisan pension reform bill that I signed. It's now going to be for the courts, the Supreme Court ultimately, and they will make the decision on that regarding our Constitution. I do want to go back to one thing that my opponent persists in misstating. 
We have raised funding for education. Despite all the hard times, we've raised our funding for classroom education by almost $500 million, half a billion dollars. And we have paid the pension amounts every single year for teachers and all public employees. Governors before me did not do that. I have done that. I have complied with the law. I've invested in our pension systems properly, and that's why uh, that's the best way to go uh, to move Illinois forward. But, Governor, if the Supreme Court does find that pension law that you did sign uh, unconstitutional because of that clause, should it be removed from the Constitution? Well, my dad taught me a long time ago, don't take an aspirin to get a headache. Uh, we don't have a decision of the Supreme Court. I don't think it's wise at all to take something that both the legislature and I, I feel are constitutional provisions before the court acts. If the court acts in a way that is contrary, we'll take uh, necessary steps, obviously. Let's but the bottom on. line is we have to deal with the uh, liability problems. It, uh, I inherited, I didn't create this problem, but I'm solving the problem by putting the proper amount amount every year into the pensions Governor, of our teachers and public on. employees. H. Wayne Wilson has a question for Governor Quinn. Statewide advisory question number one on the November 4th ballot asks if the minimum wage in Illinois for adults over the age of 18 should be raised to $10 per hour by January 1st. The Congressional Budget Office says that a minimum wage of $10.10 an hour would cause the nation to lose a minimum of 500,000 jobs. You have described yourself as a jobs governor. How does that square with that position? And for Mr. Rauner, if the ballot question is approved, will you seek to implement such a change at the $10 level? Why or why not? Okay, number one, that particular study you're talking about, they speculated that there would be a job loss. There have been other studies, very st solid academic studies, that indicate that raising the minimum wage is the best way, the best way to help create jobs and help our economy. 70% of our economy is consumer spending. I favor raising the minimum wage. I got it done in 2003, in 2007. We're going to do it again in 2015, January 1. There's a referendum on the ballot that I signed into law to give people a chance to vote for a $10 an hour minimum wage. My opponent all across Illinois went across the state saying eliminate the minimum wage. A person taking in $53 million a year running around Illinois saying eliminate the minimum wage. He's adamantly against the minimum wage. Well, I'm adamantly for raising the minimum wage. It's the best way to help thousands of people who do hard jobs, work hard, living from paycheck to paycheck. Let's give them a raise. That's the best way to have social justice and help people who are the heart and soul of Illinois. Mr. Rahner. Pat Quinn has been governor for six years, and he's had a supermajority of his party in the General Assembly, and he has not increased the minimum wage in that period of time. If he was serious about this, he could have gotten it done. He's playing political football with people's lives and with our economy. Here's the way to deal with the minimum wage. Illinois today is not competitive. We need to grow our economy. We need jobs is the first and foremost uh, issue. Pat Quinn has been a failure on jobs under his administration. We've become the lowest state of job growth of any state in the Midwest. We are failing on jobs. There are two ways to be competitive and raise the minimum wage, which I support. One is to increase the national minimum wage up above Illinois, so we're all at the same level and Illinois is more competitive, because today ours is higher than the national. The other way is to raise Illinois' minimum wage over time as high as $10, but do it in conjunction with pro-business reforms, tax reduction, workers' comp reform, and tort reform, so our small business owners can afford to pay a higher minimum wage, our competitiveness is there, and that will help all families. Jamie Dunn for Mr. Rahner. I have a two-parter as well. Mr. Rahner, um, you like to point to the successes of Republican governors in other states, but Kansas Governor Sam Brownback cut income taxes in an effort to make the state more business friendly. And now, two years later, job growth lags behind the rest of the country, and the state has had to cut funding as it grapples with the budget shortfall. Explain how your proposal to lower taxes and cover state revenues with the resulting economic growth would have different outcomes in Illinois. And Governor Quinn, you have rejected your opponent's proposal to extend the sales tax to some services, even though a sales tax on services could be crafted to avoid being recessive. Re re I'm sorry, regressive. Why do you oppose what many in your party see as a needed change to make the state's revenue structure sustainable in the future? Uh, who's first? Okay. You are. Um, 
Governor Quinn today is playing put political football with this issue as well. In the past, he has supported a sales tax on services. I Here's would actually the, like you to address the cuts in Kansas and, and the revenue exactly. issue. Exactly. So um, I don't agree with the, with the uh, tax uh, policies that were put in place in Kansas. I don't agree with them. I would not do that. What I've advocated it was, is that we look at our entire tax code in Illinois and we reform our enti entire tax code to make us more competitive. We have got to grow our economy. What we can't solve our problems by doing is just raising taxes on the families, like our current governor has been doing. We need to grow. We need a pro-growth tax code. The, our, the rapidly growing states have a broad base and low rates. I believe we should work our rates down, but we should broaden the base. We should expand the sales tax to include some services, services that are more business oriented rather than on uh, 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 low income working families. But we need to close corporate welfare, tax loopholes. Uh, we need to modify all the tax code to become pro-growth to get the revenue we need. Governor Quinn. I believe taxes should be based on ability to pay. It's a principle as old as the Bible. That's why I believe the income tax is a fairest tax. Nobody likes paying taxes. I don't. But I think we should have a tax system based on ability to pay. My opponent, in proposing this service tax, this rounder tax on services, services including garbage pickup, Everyday people are going to have to pay a tax on garbage pickup, or if they adopt a child or uh, go to someone to have a will made. Uh, those are unfair taxes. Uh, the folks who are millionaires and billionaires always want to shift the burden onto everyday people. My opponent's plan will give himself a $1 million tax cut. It'll shift the burden onto everyday hardworking people who have to pay a tax on their garbage pickup. That's not right. I think we ought to have a fair tax system that properly invests in education. My opponent's plan will cut $4 billion out of our education budget. How do you grow jobs if you're cutting one out of six teachers' jobs in Illinois and uh, slashing classroom uh, spending all across our state? Our kids need to learn, and we need a proper education budget funded by the income tax. Amanda Venicky for Governor Quinn. Governor Quinn, your campaign supporters have su suggested that Mr. Rauner is trying to buy the black vote, for example, with a million dollar donation to a credit union on Chicago's South Side. How is that any different than announcing taxpayer funded construction programs, for example, or programs like the Neighborhood Recovery Initiative? Well, and I think Mr. Rauner, or do you want, we can do that. That's fine if you want to go ahead. Okay, well, I, I believe in competing for everyone's votes everywhere in this state. I'm right here, not far from Washington, Illinois, and I've been to Washington, Illinois on many occasions after a terrible tornado that demolished 1,100 homes in this area. And I think it's important that our state rise to the occasion to help people in dire need, in a disaster in this case. Uh, with respect to the violence that has occurred in Chicago, uh, it's important that we act. And I think we have to make sure, and I'll never apologize, for making sure that we help keep families safe and we keep kids on the right track. I was so happy with the Jackie Robinson West Little League success this year. It showed when parents work together with their kids for a common good, uh, great things can happen. And so it's important we invest in those kind of things, after-school programs, weekend programs for kids, summer job programs. And that's the best way to fight violence and the best way to help families. And then, Mr. Rauner, can you explain why you haven't made an investment to the Southside Community Federal Credit Union before running for office? And if you are elected as governor, do you plan on continuing to use your pocketbook to make those sort of investments? And what do you say to those that say that could be a conflict of interest? Oh, it's not a conflict at all. The difference is I'm using my personal money. Pat Quinn has been trying to buy the election using taxpayer money, both in his NRI program and in his various other programs. He's been running around the state using taxpayer money, dropping it in certain communities to try to get voters influenced. It's wrong, but that's politics in Illinois. My wife and I have been very involved in the African-American community in and around Chicago and other, uh, other uh, cities for decades. We are major donors uh, to early childhood education in the black community, charter schools in the black community, teacher training in the black community. I personally donated to fund a uh, uh, full professorship at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, which is dedicating to educating African-American leaders for, throughout the United States. My wife and I care deeply about the African-American community here in Illinois and around the U.S. We're, we've been involved for decades. It's not politics. I learned about this particular credit union in the campaign trail. Someone brought it up to me in an event. It sounded like a good program, and I made an investment there, and I'm honored to have done it. Next question is from H. Wayne Wilson to Mr. Rahner. In talking to business leaders across the area, 
they expressed much more concern over workers' compensation than the tax rate. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, to reduce worker compensation costs, would you support a bill which establishes a state fund to create a competitive marketplace for employers to purchase cheaper insurance policies as 25 other states have done? Um, as I've traveled a state, I've driven 145,000 miles in virtually every county meeting with tens of thousands of voters. Small business owners have told me their number one problem in Illinois is the workers' compensation system. It's broken, it's, ab it's full of abuse. I'll make it a priority as governor to drive real workers' comp reform. Uh, the, the, uh, the concept that you've laid out here in your question is interesting. I don't know enough to say for sure that that is a program I will pursue, but it sounds very appealing based on uh, what I've heard about it so far. But I know we can drive workers' comp reform by looking at what other well-run states do. Um, our politicians um, in Springfield, including uh, Governor Quinn, said they did workers' comp reform a few years ago. As a, in the reality was, it wasn't real workers' comp reform. It reduced rates a small bit. But even today, the CEO of Caterpillar, it is, who's trying to wrestle with whether to build their headquarters here, has, says, has told me workers' comp costs Caterpillar five times too much more today in Illinois, five times as much as, as over in Indiana. They're growing their jobs out of Illinois. We've got to change that. Governor. Well, number one, we have enacted workers' comp reform in a bipartisan way. I work with the Illinois Manufacturers Association, the Illinois Retail Merchants. As a matter of fact, the reforms enacted have reduced the amount of money paid for workmen's comp by our businesses by $450 million, a 19 percent reduction. Uh, we always are interested in working more, but I got that done. My opponent talks, we get it done. I do want to go back to one thing that he just mentioned about the African-American community and his uh, uh, care for them. You know, he has 51 executives at his uh, investment firm. Not one, not one was an African-American. I don't think that's right. I think if you really care about the community of Illinois, everybody in, nobody left out. Nobody should be uh, denied an opportunity to work uh, in uh, an investment firm. There's many well-qualified African-Americans. And I think it's important that we understand that our state goes forward because of our diversity, because we are strong. We have a diverse population. And I don't think it's right uh, to leave folks behind. And that's exactly what my opponent did. But would you support a, a competitive marketplace for cheaper policies? I think we need to look at having as much competition in workman's comp as possible. I have directed our director of insurance to try and ensure that these insurance companies are truly competitive. The more competition, the best rates we can get for our businesses. Mr. Ronner, would you, uh, would you, like, would you support that? Uh, it sounds like a very appealing program. I'd have to study it to give a definitive answer, but I think something like that could make a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, Jamie Dunn for Governor Quinn. Governor Quinn, you supported cuts to the Medicaid system that were supposed to save billions, but the changes have failed to meet their spending targets. Uh, meanwhile, Mr. Rauner has said that he opposes the Medicaid expansion under the Affordable Care Act, but in some states that took a pass on the expansion, as much as a third of the poorest residents are currently uninsured. How would you ensure that the poor in Illinois have access to medical coverage while also keeping Medicaid from squeezing out funding for other areas, such as education? Well, during a tough budget time, we did have to restructure our Medicaid program. It was difficult, and we passed a bipartisan bill to do that. In fact, uh, it was able to make great economies. At the same time, this past year, we were able to restore a number of the programs to our Medicaid program because our economy is doing much better. Having said that, I did sign the bill to make sure that we got money from Washington to ensure many more people in Illinois in our health care system under the Affordable Care Act. 685,000 people have received uh, health coverage under the Affordable Care Act, which I support. My opponent would have denied that funding to our state. That's what he said. He would have said to thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of families who now have health insurance under this law, that he would have denied that to them, just the way they did down in Texas and over in Indiana and Wisconsin. Those governors... But how do you, keep, how do you plan to keep the cost in check? Well, I think the reforms that we've enacted have done exactly that. They're very good reforms that keep uh, uh, the cost to a reasonable level. At the same time, we've received more money from Washington to cover more people. And I think it's very important that we have as far-reaching health care coverage as we can in Illinois. My opponent would have denied that. Uh, Mr. He Ronner would have needs denied 400,000 people. Governor, uh, Mr. Ronner needs an opportunity to answer that. 
as well? Um, as I said, I would not have uh, expanded uh, Medicaid uh, under the Affordable Care Act the way it was done. Uh, it's the law now, it's here. I don't advocate rolling it back. What I do advocate is restructuring the program to eliminate the waste and fraud. It is a stunningly mismanaged program under, under Governor Quinn. I've met with nurses who work inside the department and deal with Medicaid. They've told me they, they wanted to meet uh, in private because they were worried they'd get fired for sharing with me what's going on. The waste and fraud in our Medicaid program is out of control. Some of that came to light when there was a private investigation that was required under the legislation to check on enrollment abuses in the system. They were finding that uh, as many as 40 percent of enrollees weren't entitled to get the benefits they were getting. Governor Quinn stopped that private investigation. There is waste and fraud that's costing taxpayers huge amounts of money. We need a good Medicaid program. I support a substantial, high-quality, well-funded Medicaid program, but we don't have that in Illinois. What we have is massive mismanagement there, just as we do in many departments under Pat Quinn. Amanda Vinicky for Bruce Rahner. Certainly, both of you like to tout your accomplishments, and frankly, I don't blame you. Um, some of my colleagues in the press, however, have uh, done a good job, I think, of displaying some of your failures in both of your leadership positions. You as a CEO and you as CEO of the state, what is your biggest regret or mistake? Um, I have just terrific pride in our accomplishments. Uh, the problem is in business, not every company succeeds. And that's unfortunate. I wish that weren't true. But that's the free enterprise system. Some companies uh, succeed, some fail. Venture capital helping start and grow businesses is extremely risky. Not every company succeeds. And unfortunately, occasionally, rarely, some executives uh, engage in bad behavior, unethical behavior. Uh, that's unfortunate, but it's a fact of life. Where we found that to be true, we've tried to take action to correct it and punish those responsible. Overall, our track record of success is outstanding, one of the top track records of an, any investment firm in the United States. And we've invested on behalf of Illinois' pensions and in 22 other states for their pensions. We've generated well over double the stock market returns. We were honored to work for teachers in Illinois, where we generated almost 25 percent compound annually uh, for the teachers' retirement system. We've also managed money for corrections officers, police officers, and government workers in Illinois, and have done an outstanding job in generating uh, retirement money. Governor Quinn. Well, I'm definitely not perfect. I don't think any human being is. Uh, if I have one regret uh, along the way as governor, you know, I suspended the pay of legislators and my own pay in order to try and get important fiscal reforms that moved our state forward. If I had to do it over again, I would have done it earlier. I think it would have made a bigger difference and saved more money. I think it's important always to take responsibility. If anything is going in the wrong direction in state government, you've got to take responsibility. You've got to act. You've got to put in reforms. I've tried to do that in every uh, challenge I've had as governor. I think that's the way to go. By contrast, my opponent never takes responsibility for the things that went wrong in his uh, empire. Uh, the nursing home scandal where people lost their lives, where they have $1 billion worth of verdicts of, for wrongful death of seniors who were killed in their nursing homes. Uh, he's, all he does is took the money. He never took responsibility, never did anything to straighten it out. Same way with all these businesses that went wrong under his watch. And I think it's important to understand that six of his executives are now in jail for their bad behavior. H. Wayne Wilson for Governor Quinn. <laughs> what current state services does Illinois need to reduce, eliminate, or privatize at a savings in order to help the state meet its fiscal constraints? And please be specific. Well, privatizing, I think you got to be careful about that. I, I really honor the work of our public employees. My opponent spent the primary demonizing public employees. And I honor all of those who are our firefighters, our police officers, all of those who work for the public, our teachers. I'm certainly not for privatizing our teachers. And all this about the charter schools, I believe in public education. I think that's what we should invest in. I think it's very, very important to understand that tonight, my opponent, who's a billionaire, who took in $53 million in just one year, he's not for raising the income tax at all on millionaires like himself. Instead, what he wants is to have the same tax rate uh, that he has for a minimum wage worker, and he wants to reduce the minimum what, wage. What service That's would you not cut? right. What service would you cut, Governor? 
We have cut a number of services, $5 billion I've cut in our state since I've been governor in the budget. And our budget level today is, is at 2008 levels. At the same time, I've had to close 50 facilities, and it's very difficult. My opponent goes around the state and says, reopen the facilities. That's no way to save money. We're going to stop there. Mr. Ronner. Unfortunately, under Governor Quinn, Illinois has been one of the worst-run states in America. We have rampant misspending of taxpayer money, massive waste in the system. One large example is in the Department of Central Management Services. It's the bureaucracy that's supposed to run state government. Even Governor Quinn's own people, his own staff, have said there's over half a billion dollars of wasted spending in the procurement process inside central management services. Governor Quinn doesn't do anything about that because that's part of the cesspool of cronyism and patronage that's so endemic inside our state government. He relies on that for his election. He relies on that for campaign cash. And that's rampant throughout the departments. He's been caught increasing patronage hiring illegally inside the Department of Transportation. Changing uh, patronage and cronyism can, corruption can save a lot of money. Experts in the, at the uh, UIC, I believe, estimated that we pay over a half a billion dollars in a corruption tax because of the types of bad behavior that Governor Quinn and Rod Blagojevich have engaged in. Jamie Dunn to Mr. Ronner. Changes to retirement benefits aside, should the state continue on the current pension payment um, schedule or should the state consider extending it into the future to lower the amount that it has to pay? And should the state consider lowering the funding level from a 100 percent target to a 70 or 80 percent target to ease the strain on the budget? I'm sorry, is this? It's your, it's your turn, Mr. Roberts. Okay, I'm sorry, could you repeat? Sure. Um, should the state continue on the current pension payment um, mm -hmm. plan that we have as far as the schedule, or should we consider extending it, essentially refinancing the debt and taking some of the pressure off? And should we look to a 100 percent funding level, or should the state consider reducing to a 70 or 80 percent funding re le level to ease the strain on the budget? Well, here's, again, to emphasize, I believe the right answer for the pensions is to create a second pension plan for the future. That's, that's constitutional. It's fair to the workers and the taxpayers. But and benefits I'm, aside, the way that we make the payments now, should we change that? Should we change the schedule that puts a lot of the pressure in the current years of the state budget? Well, here's the problem. Um, the politicians in Illinois have pl been playing kick the can down the road for decades. I, we shouldn't do that anymore. It's not fair to the workers. It's not fair to the retirees. It's not fair to the taxpayers. What our politicians do in Illinois is make promises to workers, then don't honor the promises by paying in. We've got to change that. I believe the right fair thing to do is freeze the current pension system, honor the obligations that have been accrued and paid into, but create a second pension plan. That, and that second pension plan can have options for uh, the uh, employees, more defined contribution, more defined benefit, but it should be very different than the one that's been historically done. More affordable, more flexible, more employee control. That's, that's the key thing. Governor Quinn, your idea. Your well, ideas. I have paid the pension amount every single year I've been governor. I'm the first governor, I think, in anybody's memory to do exactly that. Previous governors did not pay the proper amount, and that's why the liability grew to $100 billion. We had to do something about it. We passed the pension reform bill. I signed it. It's now before the courts. This time, we pay the appropriate amount every year. I am definitely not for what my opponent is advocating. When you read between the lines here and read all the details, he wants a risky 401k system that does not have any proper funding uh, that will cause great harm to public employees and the people of Illinois. That whole crowd in Wall Street that caused such great havoc to the American economy, they were the ones who were coming up with these schemes. But and we're not going to have it here. But should the current pension ramp? the schedule in which we well, make Well, co I'm complying with that right now, and I pay the proper amount every year uh, in order to be actuarially sound. I'm the first governor to do it. I think you have to do that for our public employees, but also for the taxpayers. We enacted some reforms in a bipartisan way that will, uh, I think, be best for the people of Illinois. Amanda Finicky for Governor Quinn. Hi, Governor. I know that you proposed what you say was a balanced budget, and that relies on a, an extension of the current income tax level, but that didn't happen. You yourself called the spending plan submitted by the General Assembly incomplete and said that it postpones the tough decisions. Mm. And minus a small veto, you signed it into law nonetheless. Mm. 
Why did you not veto it or call the General Assembly back into a special session? And did that have anything to do with this campaign for re-election? No, a budget is a 365-day-a-year exercise, and uh, we have to go back to the budget for this fiscal year after November 19th when they resume in Springfield. Uh, what I wanted to do was make sure our schools were open and everyone was uh, receiving proper health care, so we had to start the budget year on July 1st. Now, I believe, as I said before, that our budget that I suppose, uh, uh, proposed to the legislature is the best one for Illinois. The three credit rating agencies said it was affordable and reasonable. It will pay our bills. It will properly invest in education and health care, help our veterans, and it will get Illinois to a good spot. I think using the income tax to fund our government is the fairest way to go. My opponent has a rounder tax, a tax on services, like picking up your garbage. Uh, that's what billionaires do. They get, take uh, tax breaks for themselves, a million dollar tax break in his case, and uh, heap a higher tax burden on everyday people. That's not right. And so I think uh, in the course of this budget year, we've got to get a fair budget that uh, properly invests in schools. Mr. Rauner. Well, Mr. Rauner, feel free to address some of what the governor has said there. But um, outside of your own campaign, nobody seems to be able to make the numbers in your budget blueprint add up. You've said that you want to give more money to state parks, to education, to higher education, while at the same time cutting revenues and rolling back the income tax to 3 percent in four years. So let's try again. <laughs> make that add up, please. We've got to set our goals and our priorities and then manage to them. We need a competitive tax code, we'll get there. We need to reduce the income tax, we'll get there. We need to grow our economy, which is the single most important thing we can do, and we are failing miserably under Pat Quinn to grow our economy and create jobs. Nothing else will get fixed unless we are growing and creating jobs. I'll drive that. I've been a business builder my whole career. Here's the tragedy in Illinois. We have been controlled now for 12 years by a group of Chicago machine political leaders, Pat Quinn, Rod Blagojevich, and Mike Madigan. Those three, that trio of terrible government, has controlled our government for 12 years. It's led to massive debt, deficits, unemployment, brutally high taxes, deteriorating schools, with the worst run state in America. We need big change. We have to come at this on a bipartisan basis with outside the box thinking and drive real results. We can't fix our problems just by raising income taxes on the families of Illinois. That won't solve our problems. The last question is from H. Wayne Wilson to uh, Bruce Rauner. Mr. Rauner, you've proposed reopening some prisons. Governor Quinn, you have closed some prisons. Rather than talking about openings and closings, what do you propose to truly rehabilitate inmates in order to reduce recidivism? So we need to reform our uh, correction system in Illinois. It is broken and it's badly mismanaged under Governor Quinn, just as most departments of our governor, uh, government have been under Quinn. Um, we have a tragic situation in Illinois. We have unsafe prisons. We have corrections officers with their life and their personal safety at risk. We have inmates with their personal safety at risk because we haven't properly staffed and invested in our correction system. We also incarcerate nonviolent offenders very often here, and we do a very poor job relative to other states for providing alternative uh, routes to deal with nonviolent offenders, ways that they are more likely to receive help and avoid falling back into lives of crime and finding, helping them find ways to uh, get back in society and be productive citizens. We don't think outside the box. We don't do good innovative programs like other states do. We've got to change our system. Governor Quinn is failing on this. Our corrections officers are at risk. Our inmates are at risk. We've got to change this. Governor Quinn. Well, the union representing the cor correction officers has endorsed me, not him. I think that's important to understand. And with respect to uh, our correction system, we have reduced the number of repeat offenders. One thing we use is what's called adult redeploy. We invest in the front end trying to keep people out of our state prison, alternative ways of uh, punishing people for bad behavior so they don't have a life of crime. Uh, we've invested in that. I've done that in our budget, so my opponent is completely wrong about that. In addition, when people do 
come out of prison, we have programs of re-entry to help people who have made an offense, paid their debt to society, get a job, go on the straight path. And uh, we've been able to do that as well. We've invested greatly in that. I've signed bills to give employers tax credits to hire ex-offenders. And we've had expungements of uh, nonviolent crimes to help people get a job. I think those are very important things. In the area of juveniles, we've greatly reduced the number of juveniles who are incarcerated by using these creative techniques. So my opponent is wrong. He's proposed a budget that we make radical cuts in our corrections budget and not help this program at all. The candidates are now uh, going to make closing statements, the order of which was determined by the earlier drawing. Governor Quinn will make the first closing statement. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I thank everyone for listening. I particularly thank all those who volunteer for important causes in Illinois. We're here near Washington, Illinois, and I was so inspired by the people who volunteered to help folks get back on their feet after that tor terrible tornado. The heart of Illinois, the heart of America, is the heart of a volunteer. In our state, we've had lots of people volunteer to change direction in Illinois. When I came into office, we are going in the wrong direction. We're now going in the right direction. We've uh, had our unemployment go down faster than any other time in 30 years. Uh, straight uh, declines in our unemployment. Jobs are up. That's what we want to have in Illinois. My opponent, he's someone who's a job outsourcer. He's uh, led companies that have laid off people and outsourced jobs, American jobs, to foreign lands. He's opposed to raising the minimum wage, and he wants to cut our education budget. I don't think that's the right way to go for Illinois. I want to have a future for our kids. I want to invest in early childhood education, in K-12, to in our community colleges, in our four-year universities, and in our scholarships. That's the right way to go. Mr. Ronner, to close. I'm honored to be here with you tonight. Again, thank you for all of you here in Peoria for hosting us. It's an honor to be here. I look forward to going to work for you. I'm here because I love Illinois passionately. This is home. We raised our six children here. I was born and raised here. I've built businesses here. I love Illinois. And I can't stand to see what Pat Quinn and Rod Blagojevich have done to our home. Our homes are at risk. The future for our children is in jeopardy under the failed leadership, the corruption, the cronyism, the patronage, the job losses, the brutally high taxes, the defunded schools. We are failing as a state, and I won't let it happen. We need bipartisan solutions. We need real leadership. We can make Illinois the greatest state and the greatest nation on earth. And I can drive that process. The people of Illinois are fantastic. We have the hardest working families, the most fertile farms. Um, we have the best location. We are the heart of America here. We can thrive with strong leadership that solves problems on a bipartisan basis and brings a real work ethic and a real integrity back to our government. I'm excited to go to work for you. This is a terrific studio audience. You've held your applause. Let's give a big round of applause to both of our candidates. Thank you again, Governor Quinn and uh, Republican nominee Bruce Ronner. We appreciate your time here tonight. We also want to thank our panelists, Amanda Vinicky of Illinois Public Radio, H. Wayne Wilson of WTVP Public Television here in Peoria, and Jamie Dunn of Illinois Issues. This program is a production of Illinois Public Broadcasters in partnership with the League of Women Voters of Illinois. Thanks for watching, and good night from Peoria.
Support for this debate on this public station is provided by the West Central Illinois Building and Construction Trades Council, representing 15 craft unions with over 17,000 members, working together to improve the quality of life and job opportunities. Strong Law Offices, representing injured workers and injury victims throughout Illinois for over 20 years. Strong Law stands strong for workers. Busey, committed to lending a helping hand to better the communities where we live and work since 1868. Busey, your dream, our promise. Teamsters Local Union Number 627, protecting the rights of approximately 3,000 active and several thousand retiree members in 12 counties in West and Central Illinois.